Uh, just downwind from a horrible OHV park where people never venture more than 50 feet from their fucking hideous RV or oversized pickup truck unless they're on a dirt bike or a sand buggy or some other similarly obnoxious uh, oversized lawnmower. But look at this beautiful uh, Oro Bankacea, the artist formerly known as Oro Banky, now Aphalon, parasitizing the purple thing, of course, is what I'm talking about, parasitizing this ambrosia. You also have a very diminutive little Asteraceae, secreting some fucking wonderful terpenes it's very glandular and oily i could smell it from here it smells lovely doesn't get bigger than uh, two or three inches and the flowers if you could see them are those tiny little bastards those little yellow things so you got flowers that are, are probably what three millimeters at most a lot of nice not a lot of nice little desert annuals going off right here. here's the target plant right over here another lovely aster Helianthus deserticola, an annual, just like everything else here, except for the uh, more shrubby Ericamarias and Tetradymias and some of the uh, Amaranthaceae, the Kinopods. Cool little lupin, too. Very, very uh, velcro y, lots of stiff little hairs, irritating to anything that might munch on it. You know, if you're a masochist, you could rip a couple leaves off, stuff it in your mouth. And of course, uh, this uh, Helianthus. This dune sunflower has the same thing going on. Lots of stiff little irritating hairs. I always appreciate the the plants that aren't soft to the touch. They're a little meaner. They got a little bit more of a fuck you in their morphology. How about that? Speaking of plants with stiff irritating hairs, here's another, uh, here's another one, mint zelia. You can see the fruit is that little capsule. Once the flower matures, the fruit is that little tube-looking thing. You can see the dried uh, petals up there. Or I guess those are the sepals. The petals are the top. Calyx and corolla. Calyx uh, subtending the corolla, of course. Intro uh, flower morphology 101. And then the fruit is that little cylindrical capsule. So the two dominant plant families out here, at least in the realm of perennial uh, woody shrubs, are uh, Kenopodiaceae, now merged into Amaranthaceae, and uh, Asteraceae, of course. This obviously is an Asteraceae, it's a sunflower family. Look at those discoid flowers. Discoid flowers with no rays. And the rest, the kinopods and the amaranths, of course, are uh, referred to colloquially as salt bushes. And uh, everything around here is mostly volcanic, at least in northern Nevada. Remember, this is the high desert where it gets very cold, very cold and uh, unfriendly and uh, snowy even at the higher elevations in the winter. Do you think all the mouth breathers up there, do you think any of them know about this... Uh, Rare Helianthus growing over here? Probably not. Do you think any of them could name one single plant growing within uh, 500 yards that are RV? Probably not. But look at this. Uh, it's called heliotropism, when the uh, flowers of a plant all uh, orient themselves towards the sun. And you can see that happening uh, with this Helianthus. The sun's behind me, and they're all facing me. And then if I turn around, they're all... Uh, I'm seeing the, the backs of the flowers. Well, look at how smooth and glacis these uh, leaves are on this penstemon. Just about uh, closing shop for the season. The flowers at the bottom are all done. Everything's done, then you got a couple left at the top. Just trying to see what pollinators they can round up and gather to, you know, manipulate them into doing their thing before uh, before everything shuts down for the rest of the summer. Lovely penstemus species. Thought it was Palmeri at first, but these these flowers are too small. And look, here's an astragalus, one of the fucking nine thousand species. Just kidding. I think there's only like uh, four thousand species of astragalus. The AKA the milk vetches. Beautiful plants, pea family, Fabaceae, but uh, very hard to key out. And a lot of radiation in uh, North American deserts. They do well in the xeric areas. Oh, look, here's a nice one, Cymopteris corrugatus. It's a member of the goddamn carrot family. 
You believe that? Look how shiny those leaves are. So this isn't using a white tomentos fuzz, or AKA little hairs and trichomes to reflect the sun. This is just using a very thick and waxy cuticle. And look at those seeds, they're very brain-like. Those are the, the seeds. Very, very odd. Here's one that just germinated. Here's a little guy. Just one single basal leaf coming up from the uh, from the ground right there. In the sandy dunes. The sandy edge of the dunes. Yeah, mysterious goddamn Ariagonum. Look at eight. The buckwheats. There was a guy named Jim Reveal. Well-known botanist, just passed away R.I.P. Maybe in 2012, maybe before that. He was doing a lot of work on that genus. Because it's still, uh, it's still, how do you say, diversifying. It's, uh, there's lots of diversity in it. They're all polyamorous. Different species are banging different species, creating hybrids. There's a lot of species fluidity. A lot of genetic fluidity. There's species and subspecies. There's a lot of, uh, diversity in Western North America, in that uh, genus, Ariagonum, Polygonacea. Oh, look, it's a, it's an astragalus, aka the loco weeds. Look at those fruits, pea family. Look at those pinnate leaves. Most of the time, when you see pinnate leaves like that, pinnate just means they're on either side of the main rachis, the main stem. You know, think of like pea leaves or acacia leaves. Anytime you see leaves like that. You got like a one in six chance, at least if you're in North America. You got like a one in three chance. If you're in temperate North America, including the deserts, that it's going to be in the pea family, Fabaceae. So this is a species of astragalus. Look at those fuzzy fruits. They're so fuzzy. And there's, the, again, three or four thousand species. I don't, even, I don't even fuck with them beyond the, beyond the genus. Tetradynia. Asteraceae. One of the species of tetradymia, no idea which. There's nothing out here in the sun. Now up here on the sandy flats, right above the uh, the Bahada down there, you find a nice species of allium, aka the onions. A lot of diversity in allium in this genus. And look at these beautiful bastards. Geophytes, they got a bulb in the ground. They send their leaves up first in the spring, and then those die back after they've uh, collected enough sunlight, made a bunch of carbohydrates. So the leaves have already died back on this. Look, there's one of them. And then uh, after the leaves go uh, go dormant, the bulb then sends up a flowering shoot, and you get these, these clusters of flowers. To connect this too. Look, okay, so remember I told you that the sunflower family, each capitula, each what looks like a flower is actually composed of multiple different individual florets, multiple different individual flowers. Well, on Connectus, on this genus, the florets have very big-ass corollas, at least for an aster. Not sure what species of Connectus this is. I have to look it up, but there's a lot of diversity in this genus. But anytime you see uh, something that's obviously in the sunflower family, doesn't have daisy rays, doesn't have the ligules, but has these big-ass corollas like that, and, you know, around 20 florets per capitula, 20 individual flowers per flower head, uh, you, chances are it's going to be a connectus. They also got these little uh, lacy, lacy leaves. Most of them are annual. Oh, and look, look again, it's one of my favorite parasites. Aphelon corambosum. It's probably corambosum. Who knows what he's parasitizing? Again, this family Orobancaceae. Probably parasitizing this bastard. This kinopod. Again, these don't produce any chlorophyll. They just steal all their carbohydrates. They don't photosynthesize at all. Ooh, look at all those onions, too. So many beautiful onions. So many beautiful onions. Here's a nice pap of Eraceae, the poppy family. Yeah, this is uh, Argemony, probably Muonita. There's quite a few species in the genus. Look at those weird stigmas. 
multiple stamens, probably five or six dozen stamens surrounding a uh, very odd lobed stigma, very oddly lobed stigma. Look at it. Then of course the foliage is very spiky, the abaxial surfaces are covered in a thick, a thick spines, trichomes aka spines, but basically hairs that it uses as spines, very stiff hairs, and you can see it bleeds black. Again that's Argemony, looks like Argamon. What I'm about to do I don't recommend you do because the cows don't like it. But uh, he does get a lot of fun out of it, as you can see uh, from, there he goes, there he goes. There, okay, Jack. Uh, Jack, pepperoni, okay, no pepperoni. Hey, the sun not driving up the road a little ways. We're about 6,000 feet elevation. He's that lovely penstemon, which I've seen a couple of down there, but the cattle had gnawed them all down, uh, the bastard. So uh, here you get to see him in full frontal. Almost iridescent purple, a metallic purplish blue. Here's a nice little aster too. Wonder if it's that Halsea. Discoid flowers, no rays, and then very uh, feathery, filiform, lacy foliage. Pine and juniper woodland. Well, just uh, juniper right now. Pines. Got some water moving in over there. Some lightning, nice. Just got a big burst of cold wind, too. But look at his seriaganum. Where, where'd it go? Where'd that juicy ketchup and mustard bastard go? Here we go. Look at that. Well, you got Toxic Oscordian. Of course, very poisonous if you were to ingest this, but you shouldn't because eating foraging is kind of stupid anyway. But look at this. Ketchup and mustard. I just made that name up for it now. How do you like that? It's a species of areaganum. Polygonaceae. Another species of Ariaganum on top of the, uh, you know, four or five we already seen in the last hour. Very mat forming. Up here at 6,000 feet, I'm sure this was all covered in snow up until about maybe a month or two months ago. Juniper is probably osteosperma. Oh, so look, you got a basal rosette. You got a lot of basal leaves. Very smooth, very blue, very kale like, since this is the Brassicaceae, the kale family. And then you got a big long ass spike coming up. Big long ass inflorescence. And up there at the top, you got a nice uh, genus called Stanlea. Now, who is Stanley? I don't know. He was probably a prick. Regardless, what a beautiful member of the Brassicaceae. That is the mustard and kale family. Four petals and long ass stamens. Look at that. And look, you, got, you also had that. The, it flower cluster, the, the all the little inf individual flowers get very close together and compacted up it, up at the top of this inflorescence. Nice, so reminiscent of Streptanthus and Colanthus and some other uh, famous genera in the uh, Brassicaceae. Oh, look, the weather certainly picked up, but there's a beautiful rainbow. And at either end of it is a chemical weapon spill. What do you think of that, Jack? Jack? Hey, listen. Do you think that if somebody locked you in a jail made of hot dogs, you could eat your way out? Huh? What do you think about that? Well, look at all this connect, this stevioides. Okay? 